In this pivot table tip, we're going to look at how we can incorporate the month on month movement or change in sales. So we've got our sales information here. We've got category, the product, the sales amount and the month for those sales. So we'll quickly insert our pivot table and I'm using Excel 2010. So we'll look at category, product, sales and month. Actually, we need to put our month going across. I think that will look better. And uh, hindsight, we'll take the product out. Okay, so now we've got our sales going across by month. And we want to see the change. So we actually want to see another column for sales for each month. But this one's going to have just the change. So first of all, we drag the sales in. So we've got two sales series. So we've got sum of sales and then sum of sales two. And the second column is the one that we want to show the change. So we want to show how much February's sales have moved since January. So we'll right click on one of the Summer Sales 2 series, doesn't matter which one. And in here, Value Field Settings, we'll choose Show Values As. And in here, we want it to show difference from, and we're going to show difference from the month and it will be the previous month and then we'll click OK. Now of course January doesn't have a previous month so it doesn't have any data in it, the first column but we can see there that February sales are down 10,000 from January and March sales are down 4,000 from February so we can see for each month. And we might just tidy it up a little bit and make the formatting a little bit nicer make it easier to read don't need any decimal places and a comma separator always makes it clearer. Okay, that looks much better. So then we really need to give these columns new names. Now we've got lots of sum of sales two columns. So let's first of all highlight all of them and then control H to find and replace. So we want to replace sum of sales two with month change and we'll just click replace all and click OK and close. So now we have new column labels for each of the month change and we might change the sum of sales as well so again we'll highlight all of them control H and we'll change that to just sum of sales. Now you can't give the column label the same name as a label in your raw data so we already have the name sales in our raw data so we might give this one sales and then the dollar sign actually no we won't we'll just put a space at the front of sales and that will just differentiate it enough but you won't actually be able to see the space when we make the changes okay so it looks like it just says sales but it's actually a sales with a space at the front of it and we might right align them so that they're lined up with the values in the workbook. Okay, we can even give this column labels a name, a new name. We might call it monthly sales. There we go. Okay, so our pivot table starting to come together. We've got our actual sales for the month. And then if there was a change from the pre previous month, it's also shown here. Actually, we might need to format these values as well. I haven't got the comma in there. Okay, there we go. That's better. The other thing you want to do is make sure that the formatting is preserved. We've spent all this time making these changes. We don't want to refresh it and then it lose all the formatting. So it usually defaults to it, but just check by right click, pivot table options, and then on the layout and format tab down here, preserve cell formatting on the update. So ours is ticked, so that's fine. When we refresh our pivot table, our formatting that we've just applied to the numbers will remain. Okay, so you can have a play around with that. There's a few other options in the value field settings for showing the difference from, or you can show the difference from as a percentage, or all sorts of different things. I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching.